Originally, I said this final video would only answer four questions, but two more questions came right in while I was doing this. So they're going to sneak in and be the last questions taken for this project. So you two are the lucky motherfuckers that will get answered. <laughs> <laughs> then anyway, without further ado, first question comes from Megamaster592, and he wants to know how many PS3 trophies I have, how many Platinums, and how many games do I own. I actually had to log in to check this shit, and whatever it says, I'm level 12, whatever the fuck that means, I don't know. I have 1,066 trophies total, I have 4 Platinum trophies, which will soon be 5 Platinum trophies, and the 4 Platinums that I have right now are Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2, Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, and the 5th and eventual one will be Need for Speed Most Wanted. Now, I'm not a trophy hunter, I play the game as is, and if I get close to, say, a Platinum trophy, I might attempt to play for it, but I don't play games for trophies. As far as games, I believe I have over 40 games, probably 45 or so, and then obviously that's over a 7 year collection period. Final of the normal questions comes from Cita84, and he asks, do you think you're going to do a hipfire commentary series with another person? In general, I don't do dual commentaries, it's just not my thing or something I'd be interested in, so I'm not going to be adding anyone to any of my hipfire commentaries anytime soon, I'm just going to keep doing them solo. Now, on to the four questions that I was originally going to get to in this video, we're going to start with AVX Gamer. Would you consider doing rants on other topics besides video games or try to do videos on real life topics? You said a few times don't get me started on religion, so I didn't know if you ever planned on doing rants on other topics. Now, I could be a dick and just say no and move on. <laughs> but this is the kind of topic that deserves sort of a full explanation. Now, here's my issue with real life topics. Unlike a video game, you know, Call of Duty, Mass Effect, Battlefield, as strong as an opinion as someone can have on the issue, they can see the entertainment and humor in someone giving a differing opinion on a video game. If you like crap off too and I make fun of it, I can still make someone laugh because the topic isn't something people hold to heart. Video games are entertainment, they're fantasy and make-believe, and although we can have differing opinions on video games, there's nothing about a video game that entails someone's core belief system. Controversial and real-world topics like the religion thing that you mentioned, that gets into people's beliefs, not just their opinions. Real-life topics actually gets into the makeup of a human being. You know, that's supposed to just some varied opinion, which most people can come to accept is different. Someone can have a different opinion than you on any topic, but when you disagree with someone on their beliefs, such as like religion or sexual orientation or parenting, gun control, you're not just discussing a topic anymore, you're now discussing or disagreeing with the person themselves. You know, realistically, how do I make fun of abortion? How do I make abortion jokes? I mean, how do you comically talk about gun control with the rising number of shootings and murders in the US? It's not easy, nor will many of the things I say be appropriate, and believe me, I can say something completely insulting and not really give two shits about it when it comes to these topics. <laughs> but every joke I make will attack someone's belief system, not just some topic. It attacks the person for who they are and what they hold to be true. And of course, with any belief system, you have the fanatical issue. No matter how much I make fun of a topic, real or humorous, I won't be able to change extreme opinions on certain subjects. You know, I'm only going to enrage someone who's extremely religious or a gun fanatic or a gun victim or pro-choice or pro-life. Reality is, a topic like that, as opinionated as I am, would only lead to extreme arguments. You know, some people won't see the entertainment and talking about a controversial topic. They'll just fly right off the handle immediately. And don't get me wrong, I love pushing people's buttons. <laughs> But it's very hard to joke about topics that require serious and rational discussions about. I mean, shit, I can sit here and tell you what a scam religion is. I can sit here and tell you why abortion should be legal. And I can give you examples of some people that should have been aborted. <laughs> I can go over the difference between 21st century gun control laws versus what was written in the Constitution 250 fucking years ago. But I'll guarantee you that all I would get out of that is a shitstorm of petty arguments that'll just continue to escalate. It's just inviting for attention I don't look for. You know, my channel's about making people laugh. And sure, I could talk about other topics off video games that aren't as controversial. You know, you watch my videos, you laugh for a few minutes, and your day goes on. That's it. No extra thinking, no soul searching or garbage like that. Other than why do you keep buying Call of Duty each year? <laughs> so I highly doubt I would talk about widely controversial topics. Now, other topics, like let's say music, or TV, or sports, things like that. I haven't really talked about on my channel. I mean, I haven't really got into any personal items about things. You know, I could sit here and talk about who's gonna win the NBA basketball championship. I could sit here and talk about the Ravens just winning the Super Bowl and whatnot. I could talk about fucking feetball over in Europe, and I know the Europeans are gonna start yelling at me. <laughs> but I could talk about soccer or football, whatever the fuck you wanna call it, over in Europe. But it really doesn't have any weight when it comes to looking at a video game in the background. You know what I'm talking about? So as far as real life topics and controversial topics, chances are you're never going to see me talk about them in a full video. I may allude to them. I may throw a couple of jokes here and there about things that are going on in the real world. But chances are you're never going to see me dedicate an entire video to some real life topic or some controversial topic. Next question comes from Simon250505. You need some more fucking numbers in your name. <laughs> 
Anyway, he calls me Mr. J Local 11. Now I fucking feel old after reading this shit. Anyway, are you looking forward to the supposed PS4 announcement? And if so, what are you hoping will be the main features of the console? Also, do you think that the PS3 was a success or that it wasn't fully utilized by developers? Man, this is a bunch of loaded questions, man. I could spend a whole 20 minute video just on this. Am I excited for the new consoles? I don't think any of the new consoles are going to add anything that just blows people away compared to the current generation. Not to mention, there's no new media being introduced in this new generation to match a console update. Now, here's what I mean. When you look back at what PlayStation 1 did, it went to disc-based games instead of cartridges. Compact discs were brand new media. Consoles were getting away from cartridge-based technology into disc technology, along with external storage in the form of memory cards and shit like that. They used new media technology introduced at the time. Then PlayStation 2 came along and went to DVD. Again, new media. DVDs were an upgrade at the time from your basic CD. PlayStation 3 went to Blu-ray, which again is an upgraded and improved media over its predecessor. Obviously, Xbox used the HD DVDs, which lost out to the Blu-ray disc, but that was an upgrade from a normal DVD. If the rumors of the new consoles are true, PlayStation 4 isn't going to a new media, and it's actually going to be sticking with Blu-ray. Hell, Xbox is rumored to be going to fucking Blu-ray, something PlayStation 3 did seven years ago. So technically, Xbox is even further behind the curve since they're just getting a seven-year-old technology. Each generation graduated to a new media than before, and Xbox can say, yes, we are graduating to a new media. But this generation is going to be maintaining prior media. No generation of consoles has ever done that, with the exception of the cartridge base back in the day. Every generation change brought something new to the table. Basically, they're just upgrading what you already have with an expensive price tag and marketing campaign. You know, we sit here and complain about Call of Duty just rolling out a new game every year, which feels like a new map pack and whatnot, but the consoles are gonna be doing something of the same thing. They're gonna be rolling out some new hardware, but there aren't going to be vast improvements or upgrades from what we have now. Sure, PlayStation 4 is going to be bigger and faster and better than the PlayStation 3. Sure, Xbox 720 will be more powerful than 360. Although some reports are actually showing it's not even going to be more powerful than the PlayStation 3, which is pretty fucking sad. But that's just rumors. We have to wait until the official announcement for both consoles. So overall, I'm not incredibly happy with the idea that a new console is on the horizon when it's not adding anything worth a brand new console upgrade. As far as what feature I would like to return, the main thing that I want is I want all my game data to travel from my PlayStation 3 to my PS4 if games will depend on prior versions. Now here's a good example. Mass Effect games tracked your decisions all along the way across the three games. If there's a fourth game and they're tying that to your prior game data, I want my PlayStation 4 to read my PlayStation 3 data. I don't necessarily need backwards compatibility, although let's be honest, these fucking consoles need to have backwards compatibility. I'm pretty sure they're not going to do it and I've come to accept that. But I'm not fucking happy about that shit. I want to be able to play all my old fucking games. But anyway, man, I'm not going to get into that bullshit. But I want my data, at least, to be read by my PlayStation 4. You know, I don't know how it's going to do it, but a series like Mass Effect and Uncharted and sports games, they should all be able to reference your prior data somehow. They should all be able to see what you accomplished in the prior game and then carry that over to the next game and incorporate that into future games. If they're not able to do that, I'm going to be very pissed off with that bullshit. Now, I would assume all my online profile shit is going to carry over since it's a PlayStation Network account and whatnot. It's all stored there. So I won't have to worry about all that bullshit. But I am worried about actual game data that sits on the console. As far as your last question that you asked regarding the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 3 succeeded in globally outselling Xbox. Which, for those who didn't know, it actually outsold more. Worldwide, it barely sold more units than the Xbox and Xbox just released that they had stats of 74 million consoles sold but the fact is over 20 million of those were replacements from the red ring of death issue that they had a few years back so they're bullshitting you over that 74 million it's actually 54 million products bought 74 million shipped there's a big fucking difference when it comes to who bought it and who had to receive a replacement in the motherfucker but in any event in the United States PlayStation 3 is way behind. It was also significantly behind Xbox in online gaming and the quality of games. And there are multiple reasons why Xbox had the advantages they did over the PlayStation 3. One of the main advantages was they obviously released one year earlier. They got a huge jump on the PlayStation fan base. And another reason, it was much easier to process games on the Xbox development kit. Now, here's the thing. Xbox really didn't upgrade the development kit. Basically, they remained on 10-year-old developer technology that rivaled the PlayStation 2. So, this allowed developers to be lazy, and this allowed them to produce games quickly. PlayStation 3 did the stupidest fucking thing possible. They tried to push developers into making amazing games and creating a much stronger and harder system to program and process for. In the end, the developers wanted to be lazy and cheap. <laughs> 
because of that, most developers ended up making games for Xbox and then porting them over to PlayStation 3. Games that were horrible ports suffered from bad sales on the PlayStation 3. And after all, why are you gonna buy a hand-me-down developed game on a PlayStation 3 when you could go out and buy the original development on the Xbox? The original's gonna be stronger. The original's gonna be tighter. It's gonna have less glitches, less problems. Why play on PlayStation Network for free when you have to pay for Xbox Live to get your money's worth? PlayStation 3 is unquestionably the stronger console in terms of power and potential, but that's the same reason developers shun the machine in favor of what was easier. Developers are inherently lazier. If you give them the chance to be lazy, they're going to take it. And the sad part is, once developers took the time to actually understand the PlayStation, they understood the power and the capability of Sony's technology. I mean, just look at the PlayStation exclusives that we had, how powerful and amazing those games were. Metal Gear, the Uncharted series, Killzone, Little Big Planet, Heavy Rain, God of War, you name it, the exclusives had top of the line hits. The problem was companies like Activision and EA and Bethesda, oh God, motherfucking Bethesda, they didn't take the time to learn how to develop on the PlayStation 3. They decided to take the cheap way out and they wanted to make more money. Develop on the Xbox, pour it over to PlayStation, it'll make life a whole lot easier for them. And Sony did that to themselves by not taking that lazy factor into account. They assumed that just being big bad Sony Studios would cave into them and people would continue to suckle off of the PlayStation 2 popularity and buy their games continuously. They gambled on that and they lost big. And that's why Xbox beat them in gaming sales, that's why more people play Xbox than PlayStation 3, and why with the PlayStation 4, they realize they can't force a developer into being a decent developer. If Sony is smart, they'll learn from their mistakes with PlayStation 3 and they'll fix that on PlayStation 4. But as far as I'm concerned, Xbox kicked the shit out of PlayStation 3 in that last console war. Next question, and this comes from the Dirt Lord. What do you think of people who use gay or fag as insults? Now this is a topic that definitely deserves an in-depth answer because it's a topic that a lot of people refuse to talk about or they shy away from. In this day and age, there is nothing wrong with being gay. At some point, even the most simple-minded person will have to come to terms that people are born gay. It's who they are. It's what they will always be. Nobody jumps in the shower, uses some pink colored soap, and hops out and says, you know what, fuck it. I feel like I want to be gay. <laughs> That's not how it works. At some point in their lives, someone notices they seem different from their peers, and they seem to exhibit desires different from people their age. This isn't learned. This isn't taught. This isn't a disease like some fucking idiots think. Can you believe that shit? People think they can actually cure gay like it's a fucking disease? It's not a disease. It's not a disorder. It's not a mental problem. It's called life, motherfuckers. It's who people are. It's how they were born. That being said, people treat homosexuality and being gay like a plague or like if someone is inhuman for being gay. Me personally, I will never refer to something as being gay as an insult. I don't say things like, oh, this game is gay or that gun is gay. I don't correlate something negative as being gay. I will never call someone a faggot in an argument because the fact is, it's too simple minded. It takes very little brain power to be that ignorant. When I see people referring to things as gay, it just shows complete immaturity and the lack of a vocabulary to actually use a worthy insult. And don't get me wrong, I will call someone asshole. I will call someone a cunt with no hesitation. <laughs> Because those curses are neutral. It doesn't dehumanize a group of people, it's just body parts. You call someone a faggot, you're not just insulting that person, you're also insulting an entire group of people for who they are. The same with racial jokes, the same with sexism jokes. You don't hear me joking about women belonging in the kitchen, or black people eating KFC, or Spanish people avoiding border patrol. It's too narrow-minded. And frankly, it shows absolutely no creativity when it comes to arguing or insulting someone, and it shows how intolerant of a person you really are. Now, I wanna make this distinction clear, because there are times you will see me insult people and make some form of homosexual references in my insults. Usually it's in response to some jackass using gay or faggot in their insults. So I push trolls homophobic buttons. I will use some creative insults about them being used by sweaty old men or something. Or if someone actually uses the word faggot towards me, I'll say something like, I told your boyfriend the same thing and the bitch slapped me with his purse. <laughs> And I know what people are going to say. They're going to say, well, that's hypocritical of you to do. You're spinning words in that. Oh, shut the fuck up, man. In those same insults, I touch on prostitution, I touch on human trafficking, or I call kids failed abortions, and any other awful topic to get under their skin. When dealing with a troll, there's no logic, there's no manners, there's no topic too taboo. There is a difference in casually using the word gay to describe things, as opposed to contextually using the idea as a creative insult. Now think about this. Someone tells me in the comments section, your video is gay and you're a faggot. Do I childishly reply and say, no, you're gay? No! I reply back with something like, just because the larger prisoners took advantage of you in the shower, every time you drop the soap on purpose doesn't mean you liked it. 
It just means your asshole can no longer carry a sign that says exit only. See, there's a huge difference in saying something directly is gay as opposed to adding it to part of a larger insult that relates to multiple topics. But when dealing with a normal topic or even an actual argument with someone, I won't call something gay and I certainly won't use the word faggot towards someone as an insult. And those who do continue to use those words, they show they have absolutely no advanced means of a vocabulary. They have no ability to generate any kind of sharp comeback which someone will struggle to counter. So those of you who use words like gay or use faggot as an insult, keep this in mind. Chances are you're insulting your own intelligence and credibility more than you're insulting the person you're arguing with. All you're doing is showing how incredibly ignorant and feeble-minded you are to think that these insults show any form of control. Remember that. And for our final question of this video and final question overall for the question and answer session, this comes from Soupstars or Soupstars, I don't know, he got the Batman signal in his name. <laughs> What is your opinion on YouTube drama and will you make a rant video about it? YouTube drama is a fucking cry for attention, man. Same with Twitter and Facebook. Those of you who are subscribed to other channels have probably seen them get involved in other people's business. You've seen them argue with someone, talk about an argument, referee an argument. Oh God, it makes you wonder why stupidity itself isn't a fucking crime. One thing you have never seen on my channel is any childish beef with another channel. You know why? Because I don't give a shit what other channels do. <laughs> That's just the reality. Outside of my Yaosh partnership, I am subscribed to very few channels, and of those channels, none of them deal with drama. None of them worry about what other channels do because they focus on what they enjoy doing on their channel. That's how I deal with things. I don't care what other channels do. I don't care what stupid shit people say on Twitter or on Facebook or on someone's YouTube video. It doesn't fucking bother me. I don't watch videos of channels who attract themselves to drama. And a matter of fact, I've actually unsubscribed to a lot of channels who began to get involved with other kinds of bullshit. No matter how entertaining the channel was, if they got involved in other people's bullshit, I stopped watching. Period. No questions asked will never bother watch that person's content ever again. People treat social media like fucking high school, man. They treat it like it's an extension of their life. And when they do that, that's when you get childish bullshit. Usually it's candy ass people with thin skin who can't take criticism or they put themselves in a position that subject themselves to massive criticism. It's one thing to defend yourself from attacks if some random troll is coming after you. It's another thing when you purposely and willfully invite those attacks just to bring attention to yourself. Now I'm not going to name names and all that bullshit because frankly people like that aren't worth a pot to piss in. So I wouldn't give them the dignity of mentioning by name. But those of you who watch other videos know there are channels who thrive off of other people's issues. There are channels dedicated to finding out what other people are doing in their lives. Frankly, who gives a flying fuck, man? These people are probably the same assholes who watch reality TV like The Cunt Dashian or Honey Boo Boo or whatever the fuck, thinking that shit is real life or thinking that shit is entertaining. Give me a fucking break, man. So that is something I will never be involved with, ever. You won't see me arguing with someone else. You won't see me making a video reply to someone's video because frankly, I just don't feel the need to counter something they say I don't give two shits. Hell, if someone decided they felt about making a video about me, calling me an asshole, whatever the fuck they felt like doing, I wouldn't even bother replying. As big a mouth as I have, as much as I love to argue, I would not give that person the satisfaction of the attention they crave. Let them talk, let them argue, let them make all the videos they want about me. Because when you ignore drama and bullshit, it goes away. When you gravitate towards it, that fuels the problem and that gives them that drama moment they were looking for to satisfy that junior high school level of mentality they have. If it's a smaller channel than mine, why acknowledge them and give them more views? It only benefits them. If it's a larger channel talking trash to me, hey, fuck it, free publicity for me. <laughs> I don't give two shits. Some random fuck stick over YouTube or over the internet isn't going to ruin my day, isn't going to change how I run my channel because the fact is I don't give a flying fucking rat's ass what they say. Won't watch it, won't listen, won't ever care. I have a life outside of YouTube that I enjoy. I've said it before, but this is a hobby for me. My channel is not my livelihood. It certainly does not define who I am. But when social media defines who you are and plays a major role in how you interact with people, all you're doing is inviting yourself into situations where you will get sucked into that childish bullshit. When your life revolves around YouTube and revolves around social media where faceless people can attack you, there is no doubt you will have a shitty life. You will either be incredibly lonely or miserable, or you'll become incredibly miserable if you believe that the internet defines who you are as a person. So as far as I'm concerned, you will never, ever, ever see me get involved in some stupid ass YouTube drama, ever. Anyways, that was three long ass videos. <laughs> I don't know if I ever do one of these joints again, but if I do, I'm breaking this shit out over a number of fucking videos because man, I feel like I did not stop talking up in this bitch. But anyway, 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed me answering your questions. And for those who didn't get their questions answered, hey, tough titty. <laughs> There's always next time or whatever the fuck I feel like doing this shit. So anyway, as always, rate, comment, subscribe, and all that good shit. Hopefully you guys enjoyed all these questions. And starting next week, we're going to get back into the blueprint on how to fix Call of Duty up in this bitch.